All right. My name is Andy Ham. I will come around to the other side of the screen here. And I am the National Event Supervisor for Wi-Fi Lab. I, uh, in coordination with the National Science Olympiad, am putting together this video to help teams uh, go through the device portion of the event with a special consideration for virtual tournaments. First of all, let's talk about what you're going to need for this. So, as I come over here, I have my transmitter set up. It is set up, it is a non-conducting, in this case it is 3D printed, you can use wood, cardboard, any non-conducting backplane, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, with an SMA female connector in the middle. On the back side, you can connect this however you need. We have some connections in there that go back on this cord to a router. I have a standard old router here. I think there's instructions for a router that works in the transmitter construction guide, and that router is plugged into the wall. You will note that the router is not plugged into the internet, so we're not sending any information over the signal, just a signal. We put this on a tripod because we want to ensure that this transmitter, the antenna, gets hooked up at the same height as the receiving laptop, if we're using that or if we're using a cell phone and like. And that is, uh, in, this, in this case, they are at the same height, and that height has to be at least 50 centimeters above the ground. And that is at least 50 centimeters above the ground. Now what I've done here is I've set this up to zero, and you can either use a tape measure or anything to mark on the ground, but you will mark down, and we first need, the first thing we need to do is determine the connection threshold. And what that is, is that is how we are able to figure out if connection has been made. You will do the connection threshold. If you are in an in-person tournament, I always check the connection threshold at the beginning of the day, before impound, and then I check it when other teams aren't around just to make sure nothing's changed and the like. Uh, for a virtual tournament, you need to check this on the video before you get started. So what I'm going to do here, you do this with a 3.1 centimeter monopole antenna. Which, the simplest way to do this is to just take, I've got one right here, just take a small paper clip. And what we're going to do, and this 3.1 centimeter monopole antenna will be put in to the hole. And it will sit there like so. We will then come back and I have the Wi-Fi info view set up here. I can get this. And I'm going to zoom in. And on my default, that is the name for my router. I'm going to look at the RSSI value, the RSSI value, and I'm going to take an average of it over 10 seconds. I can write all these 10 down and then average it, or I can get a pretty good idea by looking at it that it's right around negative 48. So once I have that, that is my connection threshold. You will notice, let me take this back here, that when I take this out of here, I should have this, and you'll see it's gone up to negative 63, negative 70. So it, that is a much weaker signal because the antenna is not in there. So we have set our connection threshold. Now, that is not shared with the students, that number. So that is done by the event supervisor beforehand. If it's done in a virtual tournament, I encourage a coach, adult, 
the videographer, somebody like that, to do that at the beginning of the video. Again, it has to be shown on video, basically what I just showed here. I'm at three, set, three meters away is my receiving laptop at the same height. Now I have my antenna, and I just have a simple antenna here. The antenna must have an SMA male connector, so it will connect to the female connector on the uh, transmitting setup. The students will have uh, their, their five minutes to set up everything and to get up to three distances checked. The way that it is determined whether connection was made at that distance is not whether it shows up on Wi-Fi Info View or anything like that. It is whether, when the antenna is set up, does the, is the RSSI value stronger than or equal to the connection threshold. So, for example, our connection threshold was negative 49 uh, here. So, the students would screw this in, and their timer's one, and they would say a distance. And maybe they say four meters. All right? I have markings on the floor, or I could have a tape measure here. I will now move, oop, go the other way here. I will move the antenna. I'm sorry, do not, that never gets moved. I will move the receiving laptop back to four meters. The transmitter never gets moved, only the receiving laptop does, and the students would then step away and test this. Now the students could ask, has connection been made? Now there we're not talking about the connection with the, uh, in terms of being the connection threshold, we're talking about whether it has been physically attached, and you can tell that the event supervisor is allowed to say yes or no by looking at the RSSI value. In this case, I would say yes, because the RSSI value is clearly better than just the background when there was nothing on there, when it was around negative 70. You'll see the RSSI value is better than that, so they have made connection elect electronically. So if they asked me, have I made connection, I would say yes. But that is only because in the past years, we saw many teams that didn't screw their antennas in far enough, so they may have had a good antenna, but it wasn't actually connected. So while they, they have electric, electronically made connection here, the students will ask, uh, they will say they're doing four meters, they will step away, we will check this over 10 seconds, and we'll see by looking at the RSS high value. It is clearly not, oh, wrong way again, uh, stronger than the connection threshold negative 45, or ne I'm sorry, negative 48, um, I would have this written down, uh, and it would be the same for all teams, and if, for, if it were virtual, we would do it at the beginning for every team. So I would say as the event supervisor, connection has not been made. At that point, the students have an option to change the distance. They can only go shorter or stay the same distance and try to make adjustments. They only get credit for connections made, and they get three attempts. If connection has been made, then they can go to a farther distance. They're scored by the farthest distance that they make connection, and again, connection is defined as an RSSI value stronger than or equal to the connection threshold from the beginning. Now it's important to note, don't get hung up on the numbers that I'm showing you here. Every router and every laptop is going to show different values. For example, there is a great app that I was just uh, informed of called Airport Utility. Airport Utility, on an iPhone here, you have to set up under the settings, you go to the settings, and then for airport utility, you click on that, and you have to toggle on the Wi-Fi scanner. And when you do that, then you can use the airport utility just like we did with uh, the uh, Wi-Fi info view. Now you'll notice if I put it here at the same height and everything, and maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't, but there I can see an RSSI value of negative 58. 
whereas the RSSI value on the laptop is around negative 64. Different devices will have, oh actually I did, let me change that, let me try that again because I haven't hit scan. So I've got negative 70, negative 66, negative 67. And what's nice is here I can then click on this and it will give me the time so I can very easily average this over my, over my uh, 10 seconds. So different devices and different software will have different values. That's okay, you just have to use the same setup for the entire testing. If it's an in-person tournament, you have to use the same setup for all day. If it is for a uh, virtual tournament, you make sure you do the same setup for your 3.1 centimeter monopole antenna and for the student testing. So, event supervisors, what do you need? You need to have the transmitting setup. You need to have the router. You need to have the 3.1 centimeter monopole antenna, which can just be a cut piece of paper clip that fits into the SMA female connector. Number of volunteers depends on how big the tournament is. If it's in person, it helps to have one person doing this setup, doing the device testing, and one person proctoring the test. But it can be done with one person doing both as well. The timeline for running each team, we try to get through the whole thing with testing and everything in under 10 minutes per team. Uh, sometimes it can be under 8 minutes per team. Remember, we have to check and make sure that this fits inside the size restrictions and uh, for the antenna and all of that. How I've ran this event many times, how I generally schedule it is teams will sign up and they'll do their device testing and then they'll do their test right afterwards. Or if I'm in a tournament where they'd rather us do it in time blocks, then we pull people out during the time block to do the device testing. But either way, that works fine. So on the device, I'm checking to make sure that there are, it's an entirely passive antenna. It's not being plugged in or anything. It fits, the big thing is it fits inside the size restriction of the 15 centimeter cube, and that it has an SMA mail connector, and it does not use any other way to connect to the back plane, and it's not going to damage the back plane in any way, or damage the entire setup. Instructions I give to students, I tell them to go ahead and start setting up their antenna and give me their first distance. They will have five minutes to do up to three connection attempts. If they are successful in a connection attempt, they could, their next attempt can be at a farther distance. If they are not successful, then they can be at the same distance or closer. And they are allowed to ask me if they have electronically made connection with the transmitting setup only until I say yes then I then they can't ask me any longer and then I start their five minutes I use the score sheets and the checklists that are available on the National Science Olympiad when I'm debriefing when I'm talking with students I do not share the RSSI values because that's going to confuse students in many cases because it may be different than what they've been getting at home because they may have a different router or a different laptop or a different setup something like that so it's important to check that but talk to them about what adjustments they could make, trying different setups, maybe, maybe their device isn't, uh, is a little flimsy or not as stable, they can look at that. What have they tried for other antennas? So for a virtual tournament again, what I need you to do when you're doing this, you start by showing the connection threshold, 3.1 centimeter monopole antenna, 3 meters away, show on the computer or on the cell phone what the DB, what the RSSI value is. Then write that down on the sheet. Then you're going to come and do all your checks on the antenna, and then you're going to say what distance would you like, and say, there, let's say, say five meters, so then the event supervisor, adult, whoever's there, videographer, will set up the laptop or the, the cell phone at five meters. The students will set up their antenna, and when they're ready to test, they will say, I'm ready to test, and step at least five feet away. The camera will then show the RSSI value on the laptop or the phone. 
determine if connection has been made or not and tell the students if connection was made or not. If connection was made, then the next attempt may be farther. Remember, all these attempts must be at 50 centimeter intervals, half meter intervals. So if connection was made, then the students will say, then I'll immediately ask, what is your next attempt, distance attempt? And then they will say maybe eight meters. Take the receiving unit back to eight meters. When the students are ready to test it, they step away. Camera shows on the laptop the uh, RSSI value and determine if connection was made. This process is completed for three connections. It's all written down on the score sheet. And then that score sheet is also provided uh, to the event supervisors. This needs to be one complete video to show that it was done in five minutes. And of course, if any calculations are needed, you know, for averaging like they're, the students are not on the clock during those. And this shows that the students were not, could not see the laptop. The students were not doing anything with the uh, antenna while connection was being tested. So one complete video where they determine the connection threshold and then go ahead and do the, uh, their tests. And if connection is not made at any distance, then they just have no successful attempts. And that's fine because there's still points scored on the graphs and, and the uh, documents like that and the test, of course. It's not a tiering in any way. Hopefully this helps you uh, prepare as either an event supervisor or a student or a coach for doing the device portion of Wi-Fi Lab at future tournaments. Thank you.